So, I mean, come on, let's let's get real. In this case of Trayvon Martin, I mean, it's clear. It's, I mean, come on now. Either this is, is a case of murder, or at the minimum, it's a case of manslaughter, where he got into a confrontation with this young man, and 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 uh, the gun accidentally went off because he was getting his butt whooped by Trayvon, and maybe he was making a threat. I don't I don't know. That's that's the minimum given the benefit of a doubt. Some folks would just say it was just murder. So at least on my end, I give a little bit the benefit of a doubt. But when you see the evidence that show clear intent, you have a weapon, and this young man is unarmed. He is unarmed, regardless to how you look at it. The young man was unarmed. Only one person came out of this alive. So how can you be on the side of the one with the gun in his hand and you have no sympathy and you won't give no benefit of a doubt to the person that was unarmed. Y'all some sick, sick puppies. You are just in unjust. That's why your world is coming to an end. You're arrogant. You are unjust. You have no feelings. You cold hearted people. You only think about what you want in yourself. And with this type of attitude, you really think that black folks is supposed to just trust Caucasian people because y'all learn how to smile? Y'all know how to smile real beautiful. You know how to act friendly. Not be friendly, but act friendly. Not all, but a majority. And I'm going to stand on that. A big majority of your fakes. It's always been a minority of very few Caucasian people that's willing to stand up and even die for justice. No matter what the color of skin the troublemaker is. But y'all so fake. Because you benefit. Y'all love America. And when you say you love America, that means you love corruption. Because all your leadership is corrupt. From the bottom to the top. And you say this yourself. You say this yourself all the time. You say you can't trust a politician. You can't trust a lawyer. So if you can't trust these people, why are they in positions of leadership and they uh, control the law and the presidency and the governorship? But you can't trust them? Y'all some sick. You confused. What is wrong with you? Y'all messed up in the head. Trust you? You don't have common sense. History shows that the white man can't be trusted. I don't have to sit here and make a whole list because many of y'all, especially if you history buffs, so you claim, I could make an endless list of why Caucasian people can't be trusted. The Native American people had a saying, white man speak with forked tongue. In other words, you a liar. You say one thing and you'll do something else like you still do in 2012. And you say that things have changed and the same Native American people, things have changed, but they are still living on reservations. I don't see white folks running to the reservations and want to live with the Native American people. And what is so sickening is that 
some of these Native American people just because they have casinos or whatever on their land, they think they got it going on while their people suffer from drugs and alcohol. They have no, they, many Native American people are just mentally dead as black folks. A destroyed people who love America that put you on a reservation to reserve you for what? Reservation. I'm making a reserve. Reserve for what? I'm reserving this piece of land for my savages. Ah, yes. Ah. Oh, y'all sick. I'm reserving this piece of land for those people I call savage. And you still live in there. And you know that was the purpose. How many Native American people died on the Trail of Tears to get to that dang reservation? Look up the Trail of Tears. Don't you feel something for your ancestors? You don't feel nothing for your ancestors just like these house Negroes. Handkerchief heads and sunboats. They don't feel nothing for the black slave. They don't care. They got raped. Torn feathered. Castrated. They don't care. They in love with that masa. And you have Native American people. They in love with that masa. Oh, y'all sick. And you don't like people like me. Because I'm the man in the mirror. I'm telling you the truth. And you can't accept it. Because you scared. And have accepted your life as a Native American black slave. You will fight against another Native American person or a black person. But you won't do a damn thing when it comes to these Caucasian people that don't mean you no good. I have to tell the truth. I can't lie. I can't speak with forked tongue. That's over. The days of falsehood, deception, trickery, and lies, all of it is exposed. And it's right before your eyes. And in the religion said, those who come, those who are blind, let them see. Take the shades off. You don't need it. You don't need them no more, Stevie. Well, Stevie, you know, Stevie, the real Stevie Wonder, <laughs> physical ailment. I'm talking about the blindness of your mind. You that scary? You that enslaved? You don't see this fantasy world? This is not a nation of diversity. This is a nation of where a person with skin color has privilege and benefit. And that's just the way it is. Well, if I got so much benefit, how, how come I'm poor? You need to talk to, your, to these racist whites that are in power that did not give you your share. Has nothing to do with me. But because you have white skin, you're able to go and say and do things. I know I can't do it. I have a problem. You ain't going to have no problem. Simply because of your white skin. This, you already know. But y'all always want to play the dumb role when it benefits you. And then... You don't think that you have to earn trust. Now, let us unite against the new world order. So I just gave you an example of you cannot be trusted. But you don't think because of your arrogance, you don't feel as though I don't have to show you. I don't have to prove nothing to you. Well, guess what? You got it. Float. Float on. Float on. You need to float on. Get out of my face. 
you have to prove trustworthiness. Because of Caucasian people's past history. But you think that you, you are too high and mighty. And since you don't really have no respect for black folks. I, what, what I got to prove to you. You don't have to prove nothing to me. Just move on. Get that bull crap out of my face. Talk about let us unite to do this and that. But you don't have to prove that I can trust you. Move out. A quick ex example. When a man really love a woman, care about a woman, care about his family, his, his children, care about his community or whatever, when you love, when you respect somebody and you hurt them, listen, And you want them to know, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I want to earn your love. I want to earn your trust again. I know I cheated on you, baby. But that girl at work, woo, I'm going to tell you the truth. Her bootay was just banging. I mean, honey. Your bootay is banging too, but good Lord. And she was just swinging it in my face and baby, I just, and then she, she started giving me signals. She going to let me touch and feel. The, oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I just gave in. But you know, that was physical. I love you. You know, I just lay with her, but I love you. I make love to you. I love you. I want you. Ever since we was teenagers, I love you, our children, our family. I just messed around and let lust get to me. And don't take my word for it. I'm going to show you. I love you. I'm going to show you that I respect you. I'll never do that again. And all my actions. Listen. All my actions. Not my talk. With my actions. I'm going to show you. I love you. And this family. And. Through my actions. I will earn. Your trust. From my children. And my wife. Because I love you. But see. You don't love black people. You talk it. But your actions. Don't show it. When a man mess up. If he has to drive. 50 miles to a flower shop. To get some roses. He'll get in his car, drive 50 miles to the flower shop, get the roses, and drive another 50 miles, 100 miles. Baby, here's some flowers. I love you. Do everything that he can to show I love you, I respect you, I want this. See, you talk that. So where are your flowers? Where, where are your actions to show that you are worthy of being trusted? You have not earned trust. You have not shown respect. You talk. In other words, you just give orders. Look, Negroes, you need to stand with us against the new world order. Talking to us like we your slaves. Again, I don't know how many times I have to tell you, but my actions will show you, you can get that move on out, not interested. You got, you have to show me that you can be trusted. You have to earn trust, 
You have to earn respect. Talk is cheap. Action speaks. And I'm not impressed by your talk. Get together against the new world order. Let us fight against the new world order. Don't let the new order, the new world order, divide us. What you mean? Don't let the new world order divide us. When was we together? At that, that's my question. They always come to me about let us let us unite against the new world order. Don't let the new world order divide us. When was black folks and you, when were we united? When was, when was we together to be divided? We have always been separated. We have been separated for hundreds of years. The modern white folks that's talking all this new world order stuff, they just now realize what we've been living for 400 years. You just now realizing that your corrupt leadership have exploited and tricked and deceived you for all this time. You just now realizing that you've been a pawn. We always we have always known that, have always been fighting against that. You just recently found out or realized it. You ain't nothing but a puppet for your white racist elite in power. We never was united to be separated to begin with. So if we were united, who were the individuals? Who were the organizations? What white organizations Join with the black organizations or whatever to fight against the new world order or whatever. Or what white organizations actually did something, their agenda, their purpose is just to help black folks do, do a little something against their oppression. Oh, you have the NAACP. Mind you, the NAACP has given and fought for certain privileges for black folks. But if the NAACP really was an organization that really stood to help the black community, we would not be in the condition that we are in right now. It was something formed to keep the black community pacified and in a slave-like condition. That's why we're still doing the same thing we was doing over hundreds some years ago. Everything that the black community, everything that the so-called black people, the descendants of slaves born in America, everything that we are, we earned it. We don't own America nothing. We pay our taxes. Even though you deny us jobs, whatever little money we can get, we can create the little jobs we can create our own. We earn everything ourselves. We defend this nation. And what have we gotten from white America? We've gotten raped. And robbed and murdered and cheated. That's what we've gotten. Made mockery of. The so-called help. Listen. I want to make this point. Any so-called help. That white folks have given the black community. You turn right around. Now see. When I help somebody. When I help somebody. I do it. Out of the kindness of my heart. I'm not going to. Bring it back up. In 
your face because I get mad at you. But y'all fakes, you hypocrites, y'all slicksters, you talk about affirmative action and you talk about all these little scraps that these white folks have given black folks for help. Then you turn it right around and make fun of somebody because they accepted your funky scraps. Then you really believe somebody's supposed to trust you. Nobody never really, nobody needed your scraps. Everything you do is a benefit to pacify and benefit you. To keep us from doing for ourselves. You should have never done nothing for these black folks. And the worst thing that could have happened was integration because once these slaves thought they was accepted, they stopped doing for themselves. Now I got me a white man. Now I got me a white woman. I'm in heaven now. I'm as close to my masa as I can get. You can unite with that type of Negro. You're not going to get anywhere with me because I'm not your slave. I don't want your advice. I don't want your help. I don't really need nothing from you. However, unlike some other black people, however, if you prove by your actions, trust, and prove by your actions, you respect me just like I respect you, Maybe we can overlook a little something and we can, ah, uh, we'll think about it. But you know, once you bit by a snake, not very many people will trust a snake again. We don't have time to keep getting bit by snakes. Now, we want to bring this talk to conclusion. Just hold on a second. We just talking now. See, I have to represent the descendants of slaves born in America. Just like a lawyer, just like the lawyer of George Zimmerman, his job is to defend George Zimmerman. Regardless if Zimmerman is innocent or guilty, as a defense attorney, his job is to, to defend George Zimmerman. So whatever comes out of the Zimmerman camp, that's expected. He must defend his client by all means necessary. When you go to court and you represent yourself or you hire somebody to represent you, you expect them to defend you or represent you with the best of their ability. Whether you are right or wrong. They have to stand for your interest. Not the interest of the defendant. Or the one who may be trying to prosecute you. So, as one who defends this black community. The one being one who will speak and I represent the descendants of slaves born in America, their interests, whether they like it or not, I will stand for the interests of my ancestors who were brought here against their will. I'm going to speak in behalf of their best interests. I have to do what's best for these people. I don't care about your symbols. I don't represent your symbols and house negroes and these handkerchief heads. 
I could care less. Let them enjoy you. Those are the ones that you need to bother. Don't bother me. Don't bother us when we tell you I'm not interested, especially when you don't have to prove you can be trusted. Move out. Move on. Leave us alone. Don't tell me about what Jesus do and all this other self-righteous, holier than thou. You are not holier than thou. Ain't nothing righteous about you. You just as fake as margarine is. Let us bring this to conclusion about this new world order. And be done with this. Once and for all. Because it cannot be made more clearer than these few minutes we spent together. The new world order. What is that? Who is that? We really don't know what that is. It's some type of fictional type people. They they throw some names around the DuPonts, the Rockefellers, stuff like that. Just just some rich people names. And then they blame the Jews, of course. Now when the United States of America was practicing slavery for 300 years, nobody said nothing about Jews. When the United States of America was practicing Jim Crow, nobody said nothing about Jews. When, and even as I speak, Jews control Hollywood, the record companies, movie, and all types of Jews control all types of businesses in America and around the world. As long as everybody making money and happy, nobody said nothing about no Jews. But now that the voices of justice are speaking out, all of a sudden, is this just the Jews? It's just the Jews. The Jews done this. And the Jews doing that. The Jews want war with Iran. It's all about the Jews. All this money. All this wealth. Created by the Jews. Y'all got it. It built America. It built this nation. None of the wealth was shared with the children of the slave. Not even to this day. In fact, you can't even go to court to fight about it. You are denied, black folks deny access to the court system to seek justice of reparations. Y'all all are criminals. See, that's the thing about it. There is no honor among thieves. So the voices of justice are speaking out in America and around the world. So cowards, all of you was involved in this. But to get some of the pressure of yourself, the Jews do this and the Jews do that. White people did this. White people did that. In fact, Let me get a drink on that. In fact, the Jews are white. There is no race. There is no human species called Jew. A Jew is just a person who believes in the prophet Moses. No more, no less. There is no race called Jew. These are Caucasian people or mulattoes. But they still look like Caucasian people. Makes no difference. You use them as scapegoats. Because all of you. All of you. Enjoy the wealth. The prosperity. The servitude. Of free. Slave labor. And the exploitation of black people. The exploitation of animal life. The destruction of this planet. Seeking material greed. All of you. 
Caucasian people. That's the bottom line. That's the real truth. They all white people. When you are involved in a crime and the police ask you who stole your wallet? Did you see them? You have to give the police a description. How tall was they? How wide was they? What kind of clothes was they wearing? Was they black? Was they white? Did they look Japanese? So, the New World Order. Let us stand up against the New World Order. Who are they? Describe them. They are all white. They are Caucasian. Say it. Why are you scared to say that the New World Order is Caucasian? Black folks have been fighting the New World Order for 400 years. You just now getting hip to it. They are Caucasian. Caucasian Americans, Caucasian British, Europeans, and Caucasian Jews. That's who they are. But you don't want to say that. Because they have the same skin color as you. And you don't want to blame white people on nothing for nothing. But it's, they are white. That's who's doing it. Some of you don't want to blame, say, white people. Because some of these folks is your mother. They might be your father, cousin, grandfather. You might be related to them in some kind of way. But the worst thing is you don't want to blame white people for nothing. But the New World Order is white, consists of white people. They're Caucasian. You sound so silly to me. Trust you and you a joke. Call a spade a spade. If the New World Order was black, I'll tell you that. They ain't personally related to me. And I'm not like them. I said, them blacks is evil. The new black world order, I don't have nothing to do with it. It's easy. Because I represent truth, justice, and equality. But see, you won't do that. Because, simply because, they are Caucasian, and you don't want to blame white folks for nothing. And that's tacky. The United States of America has no friends. You do know that, don't you? The United States of America has no friends. Everybody that's associated with the United States of America is bought and paid for. Everybody gets some money from America. From, from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq. Everybody that, that's around in America circles is bought and paid for. NATO is a joke designed by America to keep all her flunkies in check. That's what NATO is about. And America makes sure she gets the she controls the whole NATO garbage. It's the illusion. Y'all tricksters. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the white man has a bomb and Bailey world. It's false. NATO is false. It's the illusion of countries united together for the best for the best interests of the world. Really, it's for the best interests of what for America and Europe. That's what it's about. Has nothing to do 
was what's in the best interest of the world because if it was if it meant if NATO stood for the best interest of the world, how come this part of the world is super, not just a little bit rich, super rich, and the rest of it is super poor? All these years that NATO exists, and how come innocent people are dying under oppressive, oppressive uh, regimes. NATO don't get involved unless oil or gold or some type of material substance is involved. It's got to be something to their interest. Fake. And then you wonder how come I cannot trust you. America has no friends. People are either paid by America or they fear America. America is a bully. They just like hanging with America and trying to try to be nice with Americans because they fear America because America is violent. America is a warmonger. As soon as Colonel Gaddafi decided to give up his weapons program. Then they made a move on his country. And now Colonel Gaddafi is dead. Trusting white people. And he knew better. But he gave them the benefit of a doubt. Without them showing they can be trusted. And he paid the ultimate price. Don't, don't you think that I'm so stupid that I will fall for your trick. It's not happening here. I know ye. You are like your father, the devil, and the works of your father you shall do. Until you prove to me otherwise, I see you as wicked and evil and a trickster and a deceiver. Liar speaketh with forked tongue. And the sad thing about it is your only real true friend are black people. Black people have been your friend, real friend, no matter how you beat us, castrate us, lynch us, discriminate against us, all the evils you've done to black people in this nation, we still say some of them who are out of their mind don't know no better. I love America. I love me some white folks. Still, they are they loyal as your dog. And I will come call some of them dogs and pets. But you will not treat black people right to save your life. And that's what's going to take your life. Is the fact that you will not treat and you will not give the descendants of slaves born in America justice. And so now all of this it's coming down on your shoulders. How do you believe that a nation built on slavery, built on murder, built on rape, built on lies and deceit? How do you believe that it's going to continue to stand on that foundation? It's got to crumble. You have sown these seeds and now they sprout. This is the consequence. But you rather blame the victim instead of your racist forefathers who started it. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, John Adams, all these suckers, they knew slavery was going to be a consequence. It's going to be a cancer for this nation. But they did not care about you because they enjoyed themselves. So they pass down to you 
this problem. But instead of saying, look, I understand what these, my forefathers done. I got to straighten this mess up. You rather, oh, Talik, he's a hater. Oh, Talik is a racist. Oh, Talik this. Oh, Talik that. You rather attack the victims who are acting out of it's a reactionary behavior. Who wants to be mistreated? You slap me, I want to slap you back. It's a reaction. Now, if I don't slap you back, that's all right. If I slap you back, oh, that's you filled with hate and violence. You hit me first. You passed the first lick when you put black folks on this land 400 some years ago. And we have not touched you. And we don't have the power to touch you. But the creation and circumstance, your time has run out. The whole world is getting sick of the United States of white America and your lie, your deceit, you bullying people trying to police the earth. They sick of you. They don't even want your money no more. They sick of your arrogance. Sick of your. How you believe you so supreme over everybody. You so great. You so intelligent. If the white man is so intelligent. How can this nation be 15 trillion dollars in debt. You so smart. You so smart. And you gender confused. You don't know whether you're a man or a woman. You don't like black people. But you're sitting out in the sun. Burning your skin. Putting plastic in your lips. Plastic in your backside. You are very confused people. You're so smart. But you build cars that pollute the air that you have to breathe. Telephones. They give you cancer in the brain. And so forth and on and on. But you're so smart. You're so smart. That you practice slavery. And did not know. That sooner or later. That the children of the slave. Was going to get smart. And turn against you. But you're so smart. You're so smart. You put a penis in your mouth that you urinate out of and talk about that's pleasure with your high IQ. Nasty things. And then you teach the slave that this is all right and you got all these slaves, these symbols, handkerchiefs, they doing the same thing. Filthy, nasty, vile people. And now it's all coming to a head. You can see America can be the best thing to happen to humanity if you want it to. But because of greed, arrogance, I'm so bad into the new world order. What you gonna change? What it is, you just want to, you already rule the world, but you want to make sure everybody do and become like you. That ain't new. All that you want to do is complete the puzzle. That's the only thing you want to do. Ain't nothing new about the order. Black folks been dealing with it for 400 years. The new world order. Ain't nothing new to me about it. Been living in it. So it's up to you. When you show respect, when you show, when you show and earn, not talk, but with your actions, you show respect and prove that you can be trusted. Then perhaps, maybe, if the people want it, then such a thing can happen. Unification to fight the enemy of all of us. But until then, there's no dice. Because this, this game 
we can no longer gamble and we can't afford to crap out. And I'm not going to take that chance. Not with a people who have a history of speaking with forked tongue. I have to talk the truth, tell the real truth, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. If I can't do nothing else, then I have to bring the reality of our situation to these people who are made lost, dumb, deaf, and blind. So again, thank you to my ancestors. Thank you to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Thank you to Fannie Lou Hamer. Thank you to Harriet Tubman and Nat Turner and Denmark Vesey. Thank you to uh, all those who have died and sacrificed to try to do something to change this condition. But now, it seems as though the conditions is becoming ripe for this fruit to come to come to harvest. These black folks in America, we must be free. Not free because some man gave us freedom by signing a piece of paper. Because if a man give you freedom, the same man that gave you the freedom, control that freedom, and can take that freedom away anytime he or she feel like it. We have to earn our freedom. Fight for our freedom. Die for our freedom. Just like everybody else have done. And then you'll truly know what you missed. And then our babies will appreciate this generation. That gave them the opportunity to be the best human being. And then the best gods and goddesses. That the universe have ever seen. Can you comprehend? I don't think so. A slave can never comprehend what it is to be a God. Because he's too busy serving God. Mm -hmm. And if you was a God, God don't serve gods. Gods create. God's control. God's bring life into existence. You can't comprehend. A slave can never comprehend that which is outside of what his master gives him. So all the handkerchief heads and sambos and House Negroes, the only thing they know is this. They can't comprehend freedom. And when you talk about freedom, all of this outside of the earth, all this belongs to you. It's all for you to explore and to get to know. Your seed Has so great potential. You just don't know. But again. Let us. Keep talking. Let us be silver and courteous. And. There's a possibility. We can come up. If we are adults. If we act like. The mature people we claim we are. And stop all this name calling and foolishness then perhaps we can come to a solution which is in the best interest of the descendants of slaves born in America and those who are called Caucasian and perhaps in that solution the the uh Real, a real change can come into effect that will make manifest what is best for all of humanity, regardless of color. Color was designed as a trap by the New World Order or the oppressors. It's a trap. 
along with the lust for material greed, material things. It's a trap to keep you enslaved to the physical and keep you bound to the worldly things when there's so much to explore, so much to know, so much to, oh wow. That's why in the Bible and the Quran, they talk about the, the believers are obsessed with heaven. Going to a higher place. But you'll never get to a higher place. Holding on to that which is low. A place that the scriptures call hell. And we can agree. I hope. There is no doubt. That the condition that we're living in. Is a living nightmare. It's a living hell. So those of us with kind hearts, sincere hearts, let us, and we can change the condition. You don't have to wait till you die to go to heaven. Heaven can be right here on this earth that we all can enjoy. But we'll never be able to enjoy heaven until we say, get behind ye, get behind me, Satan. And deal with Satan regardless to what color or how Satan makes himself or herself manifest. You got to deal with it. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, the Angel Snub Nub 7 or the Black Dragon. I'm your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. This was it is. Let's talk about this, y'all. The Realities Temple on Earth.